Hello everybody and welcome back to Blast Away the Game Review. I am your host Dustin Murphy. Today we are back with our latest Warframe guide for the newest Warframe in the game, Korra, a Beastmaster type frame who controls her unique pet, Venari, to assist her in combat. Unlike most Warframes, she is a mixture of control and damage. To get things started out, her first ability is called Whip Claw, where she uses her Whip Claw to send enemies reeling with a deafening Whip Crack. Because of this ability's range and radius, you are going to want to use range mods such as Stretch, you're going to want to use duration mods such as Continuity, and you're going to want to make sure you have some Vitality mods to give her a little bit of boost to her health. Second up is her ability in Snare, which allows you to single targetly snare an enemy into place. Enemies that come near them will be drawn in into an ensnare trap themselves and made immobile. These traps can be prolonged by using your ability Whip Claw to prolong their duration. Her third ability is one that we are going to talk about in depth because it is her most unique and one of the most unique in the game which is Venari, her Kavat. Venari comes in three different postures, attack, defend, and heal. Because Venari is a pet in all essences, you are going to have to mod Venari as you would any Kavat or Kubro. As you can see here, I do have quite a few beginner mods on Venari herself, just to give you an idea of how Venari works. Because you will be using Venari quite a bit, you do need to take note that Venari does come with a passive buff for Korra, which allows Korra to move more rapidly while Venari is out on the field. If Venari does go down, you can use her ability Venari to instantly revive her pet and bring her back into the battlefield. Because Venari does have several attack modes, you do want to take time to learn how to use each of them. Her, and we will talk about the final ability here after a while due to how this ability will synergize with the first two. To get things started, we are going to talk about Whip Claw. As you can see, Whip Claw is a straightforward attack, one that will hit enemies that are directly in front of you. So the best thing you can do is target the enemy's area and, of course, attack using your ability. The ability itself does determine how much damage it's going to do by A, its level, and B, the type of mods you have. The more power you have behind it, such as mods like Intensify and Brutal Rage, will determine how much this ability does. However, you do want to take note that this ability, if used often, does cost quite a bit. While it is only your first attack, it does synergize with almost everything you're going to do, except for your Venari ability itself. Our next ability, as you can see here, is called Ensnare, the one that I mentioned that allows you to trap a single target in place and possibly draw nearby targets into the Ensnare itself, making it a bigger trap and continually drawing a new foes in. This ability can be prolonged by using Whip Claw, allowing it to last slightly longer than before. This ability is affected by range and duration mods themselves. So do think about using those type of mods because it will benefit both the range and the radius as well as the duration of Ensnare. For my build, I am using mods such as Stretch to make it attack further at level 30 and have the best benefit it can offer. This can be benefited more by using mods that pull in even further, which I'm sure a few of you already know exactly what mods I'm referring to. Now, for beginners, because we do have these mods that will allow more range, we are going to talk about these because they are a duality mod, meaning they do have a positive and negative effect. So do not concern yourselves with those at this time. Since this is just a beginner's tutorial, we will talk about advanced modding at a later date when it comes to Korra. So stay tuned for that as we do have several mods that we have found rather effective for her, but at the same time detrimental. Next up is the ability Venari that I mentioned. Venari again has three different postures as I stated. She has her attack, her protect, and her heal. But also if she is to die, you can use her Venari ability again to revive Venari, but do note it does give this ability a cooldown when triggered. Because this cooldown is effective and does last a bit, 
Take your time and don't worry about pulling Venari back into combat instantaneously. If you do, just remember, this does have a decent sized cooldown and it will take you a few to get Venari back on the battlefield. So let's take a look at Venari in combat. Because Venari is such a unique part of Korra's Warframe and all her abilities, you will need to take note that if you do not assign Venari a target, she will haplessly ta attack targets on her own volition, meaning you have no idea what target she's attacking and if it's a priority target or not. As you can see here, I decided to use the Baza mostly because Venari herself does quite a bit of damage and this does even more if you know how to constantly target and assign her her targets. I found this to actually be a rather effective combo for my liking, but it is not recommended for everybody. For some people, I have seen the lens become a rather utilized weapon, but do take note that it is a higher mastery weapon than just what you would use with weapons such as the Baza or the Bratton. Now, here I have been getting ready to switch Venari between multiple modes. Currently, I have Venari in her attack mode, which is shown off by the symbol of three claws being the largest out of hers. Now that I have her in defense mode, Venari is going to do the, her most to defend Korra. While this does sound oddly familiar, I can assign Venari to multiple targets. I can assign her to my frame, a friendly frame, or I can just let her roam around on her own volition. However, this isn't always the best and does, again, put Venari in harm's way. So do take your time to become familiarized with which stance you prefer with Venari. Personally, because I have been taking some damage, I am going to set Venari to heal me, especially because enemies are starting to hit a little bit harder than I had anticipated. Venari will indicate which person she is targeting to heal by the symbol above your head. As you can see here, you can see that she is healing me for 65 health per second. Luckily for me, this is a decent amount of health and does allow me to move around and clean out the waypoint. Because my defense point has taken damage, again, I am going to keep Venari on heal for the moment being and then assign her to attack at a later time to get rid of any enemies that may be giving me trouble. Luckily for me, I also now have time because of Inari to put down a shield pad that will generate my shields and it will also allow me to generate even more shields on top of the cap I already have. As you can see here, I've decided to go ahead and ensnare my foes and assign Venari to take them out even though I've already hit Whipclaw to dispose of them and do extra damage because of what I've already been doing with Venari. Now, while this does sound like a mediocre scheme to combo your abilities like this, do take note that this is rather useful and its snare can also help be a great way to set up Venari's attacks and utilizing her to her utmost capability. Next up, we do have another ability which is called Strangle Dome. Now, the one thing I did mention earlier is the fact that Whipclaw and Snare in this dome ability of hers, her ultimate ability, Strangle Dome, all can synergize with each other. The unique thing about this is you can set up your abilities to be game breaking and overly powered. The first thing you're going to want to know is Strangle Dome is a giant field much like Frost's Orb. Once you have this out, enemies that get near it are pulled in. Enemies that are nearby will see their friends in trouble and will fo be foolish enough to run into it and also get stuck in the trap and take damage from it. Now to increase the damage of Strangle Dome, you can use your Whip Claw ability to ignite it to life, damaging any enemies that are caught within Strangle Dome. This is actually a really nice ability to master, especially since in high level missions you can do quite a bit of damage. As you can see here, I am too far away to actually use my ensnare trigger, but luckily for me, enemies are in just the right spot that I can get Strangle Dome out, pull them in since they're ensnared, and get to dealing damage. I can even keep dropping Strangle Dome as many times as I need, as long as I have the energy and have two Strangle Domes up at any given time, which I, means I can hit each of those domes with my Whip Claw and deal massive amounts of burst damage when least expected. Now do take note, 
you're going to be using a lot of energy with Korra. She is absolutely an energy monger. So efficiency, range, damage, and health are going to be her biggest benefits. While she does have high armor, making her a very capable tank, you may want to take note that she's even more beneficial as a high damage dealer, which is something I have taken quite a bit of advantage of, and I've found to be extremely, extremely great for this type of experience. It allows her to be optimized for the gameplay that I'm going for. Which brings me to my conclusion. If you are going to be using Korra, I do suggest that you take some time, do low level missions, get her leveled up, learn how to combo her abilities with Whip Claw, get, get her dome out, get, get used to her ensnare, get used to using Whip Claw as much as possible, and if you have time, take your time to get the energy blueprints. You are going to need energy pads. She uses a ridiculous amount. If you decide not to go that, that route, just make sure you have aura mods that purposely fit the scheme you're going for. For me, I went with health regeneration in the long run just because I felt that it better suited my Korra. Again, I want to thank all of you for tuning in. I am your host, Dustin Murphy. I really hope this tutorial gets you adjusted with Korra and gives you a basic idea of how to play her. We will be back with an advanced tutorial for her. I hope to see you all soon. If you have any questions, please comment below. And remember, subscribe. Thanks again.